What's up, everyone? Can you can you see me? Hear me? Cool. Okay. I think I think everything's working now. I had a little weird little wasn't showing up on my uh, in my YouTube, but here we are. Welcome, welcome in. Thanks for coming. How is how's everybody doing today? We are obviously going to go over the swimming tutorial that I released on Wednesday. Um, I've gotten into a, uh, a good routine where I have videos a week ahead of now. So I had to actually go back and be like, okay, what did I actually talk about during the uh, swimming video and whatnot? I had to refresh myself because I'm I'm doing good. I'm, I'm doing good with YouTube where I have a little pipeline now. So welcome in. So let's uh, jump into the uh, tutorial and uh, y'all can uh, ask questions and whatever um, if you have any questions that aren't necessarily relevant to the um, current topic then it's fine it's whatever um, so I have a new unity project up and open um, and so we're gonna add VR to this we're gonna add swimming to it and then uh, we're gonna try to just play around with some stuff and if any of y'all have any ideas or whatever we can um, definitely try that out. So let's start out by just adding in VR to our current project. So this is a super basic, um, just a, a really, the it's the starter URP project. So when you start a new project here, I have swapped over to the latest version, which is going to be Unity 2021.2.13. And the 2021 versions are nice because they actually give you a URP version of the project that doesn't include all the sample scenes and stuff, which is really nice for like starting up. It doesn't take near as long. So I just created a new 3D URP project in 2021.2, but this should work for anything 2020.2 um, and above. So don't worry if your version's a little bit outdated. Um, so I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to delete the readme, the tutorial info in there. And we want to add VR to our project because that, that's what you do here. So first thing is we're going to go into edit project settings. And let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow. If y'all, I assume a lot of you already know how to set this up. So I'm going to like kind of run through it a little quick. Um, so we're installing XR plugin management. This takes a minute. Have y'all seen the, oh, what was the, the new game that came out like a day or two ago? Elden Ring. Have y'all played that at all? It looks like, looks pretty interesting. Not a VR game, but still interesting. All right, so we're going to download OpenXR because that's the um, basically the language that Unity likes to communicate with for the uh, VR headsets and whatnot. Um, not even Unity, it's more of any kind of game engine. Um, OpenXR is kind of becoming the standardized language for all of that. So we're going to let that install. We're getting some more people trickling in here. There we go. How's everybody doing today? We're just going through and um, setting up a basic VR project. That little pop-up right there was basically just saying, hey, we, we need to swap Unity over to the new input system, so we're gonna download another package and then restart Unity. And there's my channel. And you'll notice there's a new join button, which is actually kind of fun. Um, so I just recently opened up, so you, you obviously, or you should know about my Patreon, but I also have a join button on the uh, uh, channel now. So I am working with someone to get some custom badges made and some emotes and whatnot. Um, but yeah, there's a couple different tiers in here. One for just badges and emotes for members and then um, early videos and then access to a mastermind call if you're interested in that. Let's go back to, oh, we're not finishing downloading yet. Elden Ring looks cool. 
You think somebody, somebody Kanye West using the custom character designer? Someone made Kanye West? That's funny. Am I going to be doing a hand tracking tutorial? You read that XR Interaction Toolkit doesn't work still. It does work. It's been working from for as long as I can remember. Um, it, you can't get to it via... Uh, if you're using 2021, you can't get to it specifically via um, the package manager. You have to actually type in what you want. Um, but XR Interaction Toolkit just this week released to... It's out of um, pre-release now. So it is a fully re released 2.0 version. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for joining at 2 a.m. Holy cow. And yeah, super cool swimming. Uh, no, XR Interaction Toolkit doesn't support hand tracking. You are right on that. Okay, I get what you mean now. Um, yeah, no, it is. it does not work, um, unfortunately, with hand tracking. You still... You have to use the uh, Oculus um, Interaction Toolkit with that, or there's a uh, there's another one, um, like a, just a private GitHub or a public GitHub that you can download. Um, that I'll have to do a video about that um, because I, I do want to get into more of just the hand tracking type stuff um, instead of controllers because that's being pretty popular. All right. So we're getting a warning here. So I, all I did was click on this little warning triangle and it's saying we need to add an interaction profile. So I'll go through here. Um, I'm only gonna use the Echo Search for this one, so I'm only gonna add that one, but normally I'll add in HTC, the uh, Microsoft Motion Controller, Valve Index, all the uh, ones that you would normally use in your project. And then I'm gonna swap to multi-pass just because um, I like that. Oh, you're going to see the Uncharted film? Good luck. I've heard I've heard mixed reviews about that one, actually. And you're welcome, Kaizo. All right, let's uh, finish setting this up and I'll jump back into chat. So, we downloaded OpenXR, and if you want to make this a Android build, so a standalone, um, we're actually gonna swap back to XR Plugin Management and download the Oculus plugin provider. So you could download OpenXR as the Android version as well, um, and Oculus should work with that, but um, there's been a little bit of inconsistency as far as builds being able to get to the Oculus um, via this OpenXR plugin. So usually when I'm building for Oculus, since there's only like one other standalone headset that's like very small in market share, um, I usually just run pure Oculus builds. For, that's specifically for Android. So that's all set up. And then in Oculus, you have some settings over here, but I don't usually mess with this. Sometimes I'll enable the uh, low overhead mode. And I'm actually coming out with a video next week. Next Wednesday is good. Video is actually about all of, oh, just knocked my mic. Uh, next week's video is about all of this. So it's about setting up your project to build it to a PC VR device or a Oculus Quest standalone device. So the that is the thing. <laughs> I need to do something with Turtles. Turtles has become like the inside joke between all of the uh, <laughs> between the Discord and everything. <laughs> In the game gym, everyone puts secret turtles into their projects. I need to do I need to like integrate a turtle into like my logo or something. I think that'd be super fun. All right, so we've got the basic language OpenXR. Um, basically, the uh, now our Unity project can communicate with VR headsets, but um, we don't know what signals to send to the VR headsets. So we need to uh, actually download the interaction toolkit, which basically you know presets up a lot of those commands and whatnot. So inside of the package manager, um, normally. If you're in 2020, you can just swap this over to Unity Registry, scroll all the way down, and you'll see the XR um, Interaction Toolkit down here, but it doesn't show up in 2021 for some reason. So we're gonna hit this plus sign and then add package from get URL and type in com, com .unity .xr .interaction toolkit. So just throw that in there, hit add, and then it'll go and uh, magically find the XR Interaction Toolkit and bring it down. 
<laughs> yes, I love the turtles. I, I am absolutely going to throw that into my logo or something. Um, I, th- I, <laughs> I think that's really fun. A little inside joke between the um, Justin community. I also need a cool name for... We can integrate turtles into this too if we want. Um, a cool name for like just all the people who hang out in the discord and whatnot that's your challenge um <laughs> oh boy that's a quite a journey social engineer <laughs> all right uh so it pops up uh, since xr interaction toolkit just recently made a 1.0 to 2.0 jump um, in version updates, it's going to say, hey, if you have 1.0 version, it's going to break it um, because this is the 2.0 version. So you just say, I made a backup. Go ahead. And it'll finish downloading the turtle verse. I don't know. Is that too generic? The turtle verse. I want to term for like the people, though. Tur- tur- turtle vites. Tur- turtle ians. Tur- something with turtles, VR, and then the people who are in all of that. I'm not, as a software developer, I am inherently terrible at naming things because it's just, you know, I, I, I name things as obvious as they as possible. So, um, all right, where was I? All right, we need to download samples. This has recently been renamed to Starter Assets. I honestly already forgot what it was originally called, um, but we're going to import that. And this basically just sets up all of the... Um, buttons and where all the mappings are and sets up all the new input system things for us because the new input system as powerful as as it is in unity takes um, a little bit to actually set up and get up and running so this basically just gives us a pre-built version of that cool and by clicking that samples button that'll give us a folder in assets so assets samples xr interaction toolkit the version that we're on, starter assets, and then down here at the bottom we get a list of five different presets that we can add. So we have continuous move, continuous turn, left and right hand controllers, and snap turn. So these are basically all the actions, all the action mappings for each um, type of action map, I guess. Um, each type of interaction or movement type or whatever. So I'm basically just going through and adding all of these to my list of presets. And then you'll see the XRI default input actions that we installed. And that goes ahead and sets up all of the VR button interactions and whatnot. VR turtles, that's too simple. It has to be, I don't know why we're all stuck on turtles. It's a a Discord thing. It's very much a Discord thing. If you're not in the Discord, highly recommend jumping into the Discord. because there, <laughs> there's one, there's a guy called Cash for Turtles, wh- who may be um, social engineer. Um, can I check my Discord? Do you send me a DM? Um, but yeah, it's some something. It's just there's turtles. Yep, social engineer, always there. <laughs> you were just like forcing turtles into my channel and it's inevitable <laughs> I, I kind of love it um, so yeah we just need to come up with some turtle turtleians the turtle VRNs the virtual turtles I don't know alright so we've got all these interactions set up you keep distracting me I blame you space cadets that's, that has nothing to do with turtles <laughs> or VR. I do love space too, though. I would be down for like a space thing, um, a space theme as well, because my logo has like the space planets and whatnot. No server can resist turtlets. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, okay, last thing we need to do for the setup is go to edit, project settings, and then inside of preset manager. So these are all the presets that we just added. We're going to specify right and left because unity is not smart enough to figure out which one is which apparently. So just got to specify that there. And now we can right click, go to XR. You'll see we have all which have new options in here. If you don't see all these options, then we, then you downloaded the XR interaction toolkit incorrectly. 
Um, so we're going to go to XR and then XR Origin. Make sure you download the action based one. So this one labeled action based, not the, uh, where are these? Where's the other one? Yeah, this one at the bottom um, only gives you the camera. Um, XR Origin action base gives you the camera, the hands, the uh, interaction manager, and all that. So, And then last step to set everything up is on the interaction manager. This can actually go anywhere in your scene, but I usually like to add it to the interaction manager, is we want to add the input action manager. And then we'll add in this default input actions. So drag and drop it, or you can click this little dot and it's the only one in there. And there we go. Now we have a very basic scene set up. Let me see if my VR headset's actually turned on. I think I forgot to turn it on. Uno momento. Oh, yep. Okay, so we have a guardian. Um, I just need to jump into link mode. There we go. Dot, 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 dot. Justin's wild tortoises. <laughs> Is a tortoise? What's the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? I feel like there's a difference, like you know, like alligator and crocodile, but I can't think of it at the moment. Is is there a difference, or is it just the same? I forgot. And uh, no scope. I'll take a look at it. Um, yeah, the jump code. So the what I was doing with the jump code is that one is with a character controller, which doesn't really work with a lot of the stuff I do because I try to keep everything very physics based, um, and the character controller does not like physics. So um, tort turts and terrapins. Okay, so tortoises don't like water, but turtles do. Turtles can swim. Turtles are way cooler than tortoises. <laughs> uh, it's like, are there like different kinds of frogs too? I don't know. We're going to get off on a weird tangent here. Okay, so I think we've got everything set up so I can just hit play and should pop over y'all gonna have a bad game view for a second um but now i have lasers see see my lasers and then i can you know spin them around and whatever so we have a very very basic um vr setup now i'm gonna drop over and make sure this plays maximized and we'll set this to 1920 by 1080 Turtles are just frogs with shells. Turtles. A fighting VR game with ninja turtle mechanics. Turtles can't jump. Can turtles can tortles tor, tor, tortoises jump? Can tur can either of them jump? Oh, I guess the frogs. That's the frog thing. So. Turtles can't jump, so frogs can. Maybe they can't jump because they're wearing the shell. The shell's just too heavy. Ever think of that? <laughs> they're just, like, they're, they're frogs, but they're just the tank class of frogs. That's what, tur that's what turtles are. You still think the name should be something... Should be based on the game I talked about making in the Discord. Which game was that? I have a lot of game ideas. The uh, the shooter type game with the or the um, grappling hook type game. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> just with the turtle logo on the top this is getting out of hand <laughs> but the whole thing is going to be turtles and nobody's going to understand why because they don't relate to VR at all turtles don't live inside their shells they are their shells yes that is that is a true fact they open up can you imagine being able to crawl in and out of your like Skeleton? That's so weird. Turtles are very strange. So we're obviously making turtles today in the swimming VR because turtles, tortoises, turtles, tortoises, 
tortoises um, do not <laughs> swim. So anyway, back to what we were doing. Um, so we have a XR origin and we've got the left hand and right hand controller set up. Everything has the right um, action and whatnot. And we want to actually be able to uh, swim. So let's make a script. So I'm going to go to assets, right click, create a scripts folder because I like to say super organized. Create C sharp script and we'll just call this swimmer. We'll add this component to anything that swims. So swimmer component. And then let every everybody think for a minute. Once you buy a house, you can't just jump freely. <laughs> Oh, you're very welcome. Good luck on university. Yeah, I, I like to think that I teach a lot more than I learned in university. Like if I just had my YouTube channel when I was going through um, college, then it would have helped me tremendously. Tortoise on the ground. <laughs> Oh, you're working on your bachelor's? That's super fun. What are you trying to get? Is it like just a computer science um, bachelor's? Or, or do they have they finally gotten like a VR specific bachelor's? Um, I had to get just purely computer science. All right, so we've got our swimmer script here. Um, I'm just going to remove some of this unnecessary stuff. Actually, we'll just, we'll just start completely from scratch. Got a reference up over here, just uh, so I don't lead y'all astray. Majoring in game dev. Okay, yeah, so they are doing game dev. Cool. Computer science, nice. I, yeah, so I majored in software engineering, which is a little more of the um, how to actually build systems and stuff than computer science is. And then... Um, I got a minor in computer science, which is more about like the coding and stuff. Oh, also, I think I'm lagging a tiny bit because uh, my IDE is um, waking up. So there we go. I think we're good now. Hi, Fluffy. I am doing good. Is everybody else doing good? I do reply to every single comment. <laughs> I'll, uh, for work, I'll sit, I'll have to sit in like meetings for like an hour. And while I'm sitting in the meeting, not talking, not doing anything, I'm just replying to comments. But yes, I, I do reply to every single comment on my YouTube channel, which is quite a feat within itself. Um, <laughs> a lot of the times if you ask like a specific question, I usually will re refer you to the discord. I'd be like, Hey, just ask it in the discord. Cause then we can have more of a conversation about it. But, um, yeah, I do reply to every single one. Cool. So we want to swim. And so basically the idea is we um, want to have two controllers. Um, and then when we press the grip buttons on the controllers and pull ourselves, that's going to force some movement. So we got a velocity going backwards this way and a velocity going backwards this way. We want to add those velocities together because, you know, you could swim out like that or um, use both hands to go in the same direction or something like that. So we're going to track both of the velocities, the direction and how much force each is going. Um, and add that to our player. So to the player's rigid body, we want them to go up, down, sideways, or whatever, opposite in the direction of the hands. So like if I push forward, I want my body to go backwards. So we're basically inversing that. So we, we, we need a couple of things. And we also want to like have a little bit of a drag. So we don't want it to just be like purely, um, you know, like you're in space and you just kind of drift for forever. We want a little bit of a drag so you don't, um, don't drift. So. We are going to do a um, excuse me, a couple of uh, serialized fields. I like to do serialized fields instead of public just because I've had it drilled into my head. Keep everything private until it's absolutely necessary. So we're going to do serialized field, float, um, and then we're going to do a swim force. And that's going to be equal to something like two. 
Nope, not a vector two field, just two. Oh, stop. There we go. <laughs> I don't know why it auto corrects like that. Um, and then next we're gonna do a serialized field float of a drag force. So this will be effectively um, how much um, backwards force is getting pushed on us as we're drifting. Um, and then we also are gonna want a minimum amount of force. So min force, and we'll just have that equal to zero. So that this is basically like if you want to have a kind of a dead zone, um, then you could have a minimum force and say, okay, the player actually has to be like pushing themselves um, at a certain force before we actually register that as a swimming stroke. And so that's why I have that in here. You, uh, for the my game and for like the tutorial, I just kept it at nothing because um, I like being able to have that kind of fine tuned movement. Um, but it's an option there if you would like it. Um, and then we also need a serialized field of a also float min time between strokes. So this is going to be if you want to put a cap on how how many strokes you can make per second, um, then you want to add that in there as well. Doesn't the drag take care of the minimum force? Uh, no, well, the drag, a little, it's almost like, so the drag does reduce it, but they, they kind of act in different ways. So minimum force basically only registers the stroke if you are going at, at, a, at a certain speed, um, if you're moving your hands at a certain speed, whereas the drag is always being applied to your player as long as your player is moving. Um, so those are basically the, uh, the values that we need. Um, and then we also need some references. So we need access to, we need to know what the controllers are doing. We need to know the controllers um, and we need to know um, the, uh, basically a tracking reference of like where the player is kind of thing. So we're gonna do serialized field. The uh, left, we'll call this, well, we need an input action reference. This is um, using the new input system. Um, so we add in a using statement using unity engine um, dot input system. And then this is going to be the left controller swim reference. And then we're going to do the same thing, but for the right. So right controller swim reference. So these are basically what, um, what button are we going to press? That's what this is. So what, what buttons are you going to press to actually do a stroke? And then we also want to calculate the velocity on, you know, how fast are the, uh, they moving. So another serialized field, I'll check my TMs after I finish writing all the variables. Give me a sec. <laughs> okay. So this is also going to be an input action reference. I'm nervous. What is, what's going to be there? Um, left control or velocity and then we'll do the same thing do a right controller velocity as well oh goodness what i do there we go. and i spelled controller wrong so controller con controller talking and typing is my um worst public uh public speaking thing <laughs> so Um, and then we need two private variables. So we just need a rigid body. So access to, um, you know, the rigid body on this current object. And then we also are going to have a cooldown timer. Timer. <laughs> I don't even reference my, um, my reference script for what the code is. I reference it to, to figure out how to spell things correctly. <laughs> is that bad? What does that say about me? Um, cool. So this is, these are all the variables we have. So swim force, how quick, how much force is going to be applied whenever we do a stroke. Um, so we're basically just doubling it. Um, and then how much drag is going to be applied as we're moving. Um, and then we basically have a uh, kind of a dead zone, like uh, almost like if you have a thumbstick, you can expand a little dead zone. That's basically how what this min, min force does is um, if you're just kind of doing small circles or very low force movements it's not going to apply but as soon as you do a larger force it'll actually apply 
Um, and then obviously a minimum time between strokes cap that we can put on it. And then references to things. What did you throw in? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Just a turtle shell. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> So is this part of my body or is this more of like a backpack? <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to have to do some updates to the uh, to the branding here pretty soon. <laughs> and I think all of my um, all of my channel membership things are going to have to be turtles. <laughs> all right. Where was I? All right, so first thing first, we need to do some setup. So in the awake method, we're going to um, basically just capture the rigid body. So the rigid body is going to be equal to, not a new rigid body, a git component rigid body. And then we're also going to basically just set gravity to false. So gravity is false. And then we're also going to freeze the rotation of the... Um, Rigid body because that's nauseating. So uh, we're actually going to do constants, constraints. Goodness. Um, and then we want to freeze rotation, that one. There we go. So when we uh, first start up, we're grabbing the rigid body and then you know presetting some of that um, variables now. <laughs> Lucas, are you still gunning for the other name? The other like kind of space type game, <laughs> a, na a name in that category, because I think you're getting outvoted. <laughs> All right, and then finally we actually do the uh, the meat and potatoes of the uh, actual script. So we're gonna do a fixed update because this is all physics based. And then first things first, we need to check for a cooldown timer. So or we need to not check for, we need to increase it and then check for it. So we're gonna increase it by time dot fixed delta time. And then we want to check and say, okay, if the cooldown timer is greater than the minimum time between strokes, then we can carry on and do other things. Um, and so now, but then see the problem here is we want to um, also only apply the swimming motion if we are holding down both of the buttons. So if I'm holding down both of my grip buttons, as if I'm like gripping the water and pushing through it, um, then we also want to check for that. So I'm going to say, and the left controller swim reference dot action. And then since this is going to be a button action, we can just check for is pressed. Yes or no. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate that line and change this to the right controller as well. Oh, not velocity, right controller swim reference. So now we are only going to do swim physics motion stuff if uh, the cooldown timer has increased to a certain amount um, and we are pressing left button and the right button. Um, and then that'll actually start to apply some of that physics force. I'm gonna shut my door. All right, and now, uh, so we need to check to see, okay, what velocity are these controllers at now? So we'll say var left hand velocity, velocity, yes, yes. All right, and then so that's gonna be left hand controller velocity action, and then we're gonna read a value. So this is uh, how you use the new input system. So if you want to check what the value of a input is, you're we're gonna go with the reference, the action on that reference, and then we're gonna read a value. And then since this is gonna be a vector three, we just read that in. And that's how we access a value of a joystick, or um, in this case, it's gonna be the velocity value. And I'll show you how to set that up after um, the coding bit. And then again, duplicate it. And I'm just pressing Control D to duplicate it. Also, I've got a little, uh, that, the little uh, yellow thing down here that pops up and shows you what I just did 
um, because I kept forgetting like to include hotkeys and stuff. Um, do crush the turtle from Finding Nemo. Yeah, see, the problem with doing it, like a naming convention like that um, based on like a game is like, okay, so what happens when I finish that game and go on to a new game? Like we're still going to, all the people who are hanging out with me in the Discord or whatever are still going to be named after that first game? Like, how does that work? Also, if you're um, new in the stream, we're trying to figure out, um, you know, in the background of this tutorial to figure out what we're going to call all of y'all. <laughs> all of the people who come and hang out on my live streams or hang out in the discord um, and I think we've decided that it has something to do with turtles not tortoises it has to do with turtles um, and then how do we incorporate that into like VR or something I don't know <laughs> I'm just the developer <laughs> but uh, yeah we're trying to figure out um, you know what, what to name everybody right controller velocity right hand velocity all that um, and then we want to combine these. So um, if we are moving them apart, then the combined value is going to be zero. So we want to you know, have a consistent velocity. So we'll do vector three dot local velocity. Local is important because we need to swap to world space in a minute. Um, and then that's just going to be left hand velocity plus right hand velocity. And then we want to basically do the opposite. So we want to do, apply the opposite force to um, the player. Uh, so we're going to do local velocity, multiply, equal, negative one. So this is basically just multiplying local velocity by negative one and then setting it back to local velocity. And then we can do our um, kind of minimum force check. So now we have that force, we can check and see, okay, if the local velocity and instead of checking directly the magnitude, we're going to check the square magnitude. So square magnitude. And if that is greater than the minimum force times minimum force. So since we squared the magnitude, we need to also square the force. Um, and the reason we're, we're using the square magnitude is because it's more performant. That's actually the natural value that Unity gets back. And then if we wanted to check the magnitude, Unity has to perform a square root operation, which is actually a little... Um, expensive computationally expensive to do so we're just leaving it as the square root or as the squared value and just also squaring our force value that's the reason we're doing that and then we're going to do vector three world velocity and that's going to be equal to a tracking reference tracking reference do we oh we didn't set up the tracking reference whoops yeah, that was the last. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, realize field. Um, this is basically like, okay, in what like what object are we doing all of this in relation to? And this is obviously going to be the player. Um, so we we would need to set that up. So transform dot tracking reference. These are that's the last of the references. I forgot to add that one in. And now down here we are basically using this tracking reference so whatever object is moving um you know that's how we're applying so you know if i'm moving at 10 miles an hour that way and i do a stroke the strokes you probably going to be less than 10 miles an hour so i don't want to just like all of a sudden get slower we need to apply 10 miles an hour plus whatever stroke i do kind of thing so that's the the reason for converting to world space um so this is going to be a tracking reference and then we basically just have to um, change that to the, uh, what is it called? Transform direction. And this transform direction converts from local space to world space. Um, so local velocity. And then we just have to add the force. So rigid body, add force. And we're going to do the world velocity multiplied by the swim force and then that's going to be an acceleration force mode and then we reset the cooldown timer so cooldown timer is equal to zero what just be a regular zero cool so uh basically we are when we start up setting up all the rigid body settings and then inside of our fixed update we are 
updating the cooldown timer and then we're saying if we are above the cooldown timer and we are pressing both of the buttons on our controller and doing initiating that swim then we're going to check and see okay what's the velocity of the controllers now and if that velocity is over a certain amount then we finally apply a actual force after converting it to a uh, world velocity but at the current moment we can just keep compounding that force and adding to it and adding to it and we'll just get faster and faster and faster so we need to add a drag as well and so we're going to do outside of all of these if statements so outside of here we're going to say if the rigid body is actually moving so if the rigid body velocity square magnitude is greater than we'll do some small number like one if it's greater than that then we're just going to apply an opposite force. So add force, and this will slow us down. So negative rigid body dot velocity, and then we'll multiply that by the drag force. And this is also going to be an acceleration. So this is our uh, basically the uh, manufactured water, effectively. So like the the drag of the water. So this sets the viscosity of the water. So you can increase that and it'll be harder to move through the liquid. And if not, if it the lower it is, the you know faster you can swim kind of thing. There we go. It's a, it's a relatively simple script. Um, as long as you know how to use the uh, input actions correctly, um, it, it's quite simple. Um, so just went over this part um, and then this is just uh, you know adding an opposite velocity. So let's jump back into Unity and actually uh, set it all up. So we want to add our, I'll rename this to player. Add our swimmer component to the player. Um, the tracking origin on the XR origin can just be the device since we don't really care about the ground in this case. Um, and then we have all of these set up correctly. And then um, let me make sure y'all can see it. Um, we need to set up the swim reference. So that's just going to be the left hand select, which will be the grip button on the left hand. And then the right hand select, which will be the grip button on the right. Well, right controller swim reference. There we go. And then we need to set up velocity. And also the uh, tracking reference can just be ourself in this case. So we need to... Um, add a velocity and right now we can't really grab anything so uh, we need to set up a new action oh no scope you got the uh script to work nice why do you drag this way rather than have it on the rigid body you could do that so you could you could also dra add drag on the rigid body i guess that makes sense I, th I think this actually would effectively do the same thing. Uh, this is basically just keeping everything in the same place, though, on the same script, so you don't have to jump between two scripts. Um, but that is a good point. I think it would do the same thing. Go through and make sure all this is set up. So I added the rigid body on here, and we also want to add a collider. So I'm kind of jumping back and forth. Um, but we want to add just like a sphere collider to the player's head make it 0.25 and then the rigid body will access this sphere collider when it's making any kind of physics calculations to it and then we need to set up our velocities so inside of that sample that we got so if we go all the way down into the sample input actions on our left hand and right hand we can just add in a new input action so we'll just call this velocity and it's going to be a value of vector three. And then we can just specify we want it to be an XR controller. Um, and there's one little uh, weird little quirk about this is it has to be specific to whatever controller you have. Um, you can't just do a generic like I can't go XR controller optional and then choose like there's not a velocity option in here, which is 
um, kind of annoying. Um, so we have to actually go in and say, okay, I'm using the Oculus Touch controller. So I'm gonna go into that, choose the left hand, and then choose the velocity for that. Because I guess some VR controllers don't actually have a velocity tracking option. Um, so it doesn't list that, which is a little annoying, but whatever. So I'm gonna just copy this, go to right hand, right click, paste, and then we'll just swap this from the left hand to the right hand. So right hand, velocity. There we go. And now we have a velocity input, just like we would with um, you know, our select or a thumbstick or anything like that. It's just a value that Unity has available to us that we can just grab whenever we want. So I'm gonna save this, exit out of it. Oh, I did not. Maybe I did, okay. So back into our swimmer script, we can now select left hand and then we just find velocity. So right there, shows up in the list. And then right hand, velocity. There we go. And now everything is set up and we should be able to just kind of swim around. So I'm gonna add a ground. So 3D plane, ground, Ooh, see these sticking. I'm gonna bring my player up a little bit. And then it should swap over to... Yeah, I think it's good. Like we don't we don't even have to add rigid bodies or anything to the hands, those are all fine. Um, oh, I lost, okay, there we go. So there we go. So now I can um, kind of swim around. You can see my laser pointers. And so when I grab and pull, I can move around. Um, I still don't have like snap turning or anything like that, um, but I can, you know, turn and I can turn in real life. Uh, and then I can't go through the floor because I have a collider on my head. So no matter how hard I try to swim through the floor, nothing happens. Um, but last thing we could do is probably add like something like snap turning. So last little thing, super easy fix. Right click, XR, and then locomotion system. And we'll just turn teleportation provider off. And we have snap turning. And now if I jump in, I could just toggle either thumbstick and I kind of look around. Do you, do you use a different control scheme for every velocity action? I'm not quite sure what you mean. A different control scheme. Ooh, you could add water physics. That'd be kind of cool. So instead of having like a drag force, you just add in like water physics. What is this link? Oh, I can't. I can't grab it. Hold on. Oh wait, is this your, isn't this your asset, Silent? I need to try this. Yeah, I should try this and see if uh, the script works with it. But it's uh, basically water physics. And so you can add like floatable things in there. Um, that's the link that Silent added into the chat. Yeah, I should try this and see see if it works. Not on the stream, because then you get to watch me struggle through. Do a struggle bus through learning a new uh, a new asset. <laughs> but. So this one's pretty simple. You guys have any questions or anything? We uh we did it. The only other like the next steps I would do would probably be to like turn the um ray interactors or the the line renderer stuff off so like turn off the line renderer and the visual um for both of the controllers and then i'd probably add in like a small cube so let's add in a sphere not a sphere cube reset that transform and then i'll set the x to um, 0.01 Y to 0.1, Z to 0.1. Yeah. 
prefab. Yeah, I'm making hands, by the way. Um, prefabs. Super basic hands, just a kind of a flat-ish cube. Oh, gosh, way too fast. Where are you? Oh, I'm upside down now. Yeah, it's just a kind of a flat cube. Act as your hand, like almost like you're like this. Um, and then we're gonna prefab it. I'm gonna rename it to hand, prefab it, and then delete it from here. And then in my left and right hand controllers, in the XR controller, I can scroll all the way down and then you'll see there's a uh, model prefab. Just drag and drop hand into it. There we go. And then now if I hit play, it'll look a, lo it'll look a lot better. Oh, I turn my headset on. There we go. So you can see I've got um, two little hands. And so you can kind of better see where I'm moving, how I'm, you know, kind of moving around in the water. Snap turn works. There we go. And the hands aren't physics based, so they'll go through things. But I do have a physics based hand tutorial out if you want to uh, see that as well. Gotta show the success and the struggle. You guys aren't privy to the struggle yet. Could swim backwards by adding some more code. What do you mean? You could just drag behind you and pull forward, and that's swimming backwards. You can swim in any direction you want. The world is your oyster. <laughs> I think I'm going to add some kind of poll to the Discord so we can figure out what we want to uh, name ourselves. <laughs> cool, any more questions? This might be kind of a shorter stream. I'm out of ideas. I'm out of things to do. What kind of uh, tutorials and stuff do you all want to see? I think next, so next Wednesday... I'm coming out with a how to build your project tutorial. And then the week after I'm planning on doing a like a hurricane VR or a auto hand review. Um, just review one of those assets because I get a lot of requests about like, hey, how do I get started with this? Or is it worth it or whatnot? So I'll do one of those hand tracking. I'll write that down on my list. To open my list back up. Uh, boop, 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 boop. hand tracking. Okay. That's what y'all like to see. And holding dots with VR. I have not tried to do dots. Dots does look um, quite daunting. I've messed around with it a little bit. Um, shell headsets, AR stuff. <laughs> Yeah, you got to do it. It's a step-by-step -step process. <laughs> Gestures. Yeah, I wanted to review the new um, Oculus interact hand interaction um, thing. Because that does look pretty cool. Um, and it like recognizes gestures and all that kind of stuff. I think uh, um, Dilmer has a video out about that. But uh, yeah, I, I need to make my own make my own tutorial. We're competing. I'm actually uh, I need to get on a call with him about uh, Unity's coming out with a pretty cool um, AR and VR kind of 
uh, plugin asset technology. I don't know. Um, so the, there'll be some interesting stuff uh, dropping here in March um, sometime. Something like um, it's basically a mix of AR and VR. And like, how do you, you know, use the Oculus pass through to do cool stuff? Um, it's, it's not out yet, so I can't talk about it very much, but it's very cool. Turtle movement. This is turtle movement. This is not tortoise movement. This tutorial is tur turtle movement. <laughs> Just add on a shell and some uh, turtle hands. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors would be cool. How to make rock, paper, scissors game. <laughs> turtle, turtle, turtle. It's just a thing now. Can I link the project? My project? Oh, uh, it's not out yet. Can't link it yet. But I will. I'll make a whole, I'll have a whole video about it. Uh, it's a really, really cool technology I've tried out tried it out a little bit um i can't leak it yet but fun fun things are coming oculus store integration i do want to that is on my list of things um is like how to monetize your game um here let's do this yeah like how to um how to optimize is good um i want to do like how to monetize your game that kind of thing um, databases. Oh yeah. API kind of stuff. I would love to. So an idea I had is what if we made, um, or I made, y'all can help if you want, um, a VR game that I participate in. Like I play, you guys get to watch. I'll make a couple like streamer cams. You know how uh, rec room has some streamer cams or I, you can like hold, um, or I think, uh, VR chat does too. Um, where you can like, you know, hold out a camera in third person or have like a, have a camera following you like a third person view. So you guys get to see that side of things, but what you, whatever you type in chat is like, you can spawn health, you can spawn monsters or whatever. And I have to fight them while I'm playing this game in VR. And you guys get to kind of interact with the game by like spawning new things. I think that'd be super cool. Uh, but I'm like trying to come up with a way like of how that would because like, you know, I can get access to YouTube's chat API and like see what y'all actually type. Um, but I would love to do um, something like that. A gigantic turtle. Yeah, like that'd be super fun. Like you guys get to spawn um, the monsters or maybe help pick the objectives or like we'll do some kind of uh, it'll be like a vote. Um like, okay, for the next, like, 60 seconds, you have to vote what what path does, what door does Justin open, or what um, what dialogue option do we choose? <laughs> and then every week, I'll just, like, I'll work on the game a little bit more, and then on the weekend, I'll play it, and you guys get to see, like, the next level and stuff. I think that'd be super fun. So, yeah. I think I might might end it here. But thank y'all for hanging out. I really appreciate you. If you are not in the Discord already, um, definitely do that. And if you're interested, try checking out the uh, the memberships that just released today. Woohoo! Yeah, the uh, community game that would be fun too. Like just a really simple um, like I'll do tutorials about okay, how do you add to it? How do you do projects and whatnot? Um, and it'll be like a whole community game. Like we'll collectively make a, um, you know, a high noon, you know, you have to one off, like shoot with somebody else kind of thing. Um, that kind of stuff would be cool. Have I made any FPS tutorials? I have not. I do need to do a gun tutorials on my, is pretty high on my list too, um, to make. There's so many tutorials I need to make. I just need to, uh, we're almost to the point. I'm not to the point where I could quit jobs yet, but I, um, I'm so close to YouTube being a full-time thing. Um, like if I quit now, I could probably like survive off of YouTube's income, um, or more, it's more Patreon's income. Um, 
but uh, I wouldn't be able to save up for a house like my wife and I are trying to do right now. So, um, but once that happens and I am full time, like able to do YouTube, holy cow, we're going to have such cool stuff. Like we're going to be able to like, um, one of my goals is to make full on games. Like, okay, like we're just going to completely recreate um, Lone Echo and uh, you know, like the first, the first level from Lone Echo or something. Um, and I'll like walk you through, it's going to be like a five to 10 hour tutorial. Um, and basically just walk through complete for from scratch. And okay, now we have Lone Echo. Like I would love to do, um, some like content like that. <laughs> That's it for the, um, YouTube chat game, everyone. Yeah, if so, if you spawn an enemy, it like has your name above it. <laughs> that would be hilarious. You've never played Lone, Lone Echo. I highly recommend that one came out in like 2016. Um, it's still one of the greatest VR games ever made. And they just came out with the second one. Um, so yeah, highly, highly recommend it. Um, it's actually like, there's like three games. So one of them is, well, there's four games now. So they have Lone Echo part one and two. Um, and then, so that's like the storyline game. And then they have Echo Arena, which is basically soccer in a zero G arena. Um, and that's something I'd like to make a, um, tutorial. And then, yeah, Echo Combat is the other one. And that one's fun too. That one's like, uh, so very similar to like Ender's Game kind of thing. If you've ever seen Ender's Game. Um, but yeah, the storyline of Lone Echo is really good. And it's just like the... You know, they had procedural hand gripping in 2016. Like, it's it's just pretty crazy. The, you know, amount of... Um, uh, the, the quality of it, I guess. I mean, it was it is a PC build game. And PC games, PC VR games are always better <laughs> than Quest 2 standalone games. But everybody's making Quest 2 standalone games right now because that's what the, where the market share is like every not everybody has a powerful pc to run all these cool games like half-life alex on so but yeah that's a that's another goal for for me this year is um releasing a releasing a game coming out with weekly tutorials and then maybe just maybe y'all could convince me to make a course for like vr2 i think that'd be cool to have like a full like you know very cut down um, you know, five, six minute videos. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. So just building on them instead of, you know, having to watch all these <laughs> 25 minute videos where I completely recreate the project every time. It's just like, okay, now we're adding on another piece, adding on another piece, doing a full, like, you know, how to code, how to do unity, and then how to combine it all into VR and then how to optimize it and release it. Um, it's so like a full on course I think would be pretty interesting. Do I recommend, some VR gaming making books. Um, not VR specific, but I do have, um, I'm, I've been getting into um, game design, game, game programming. Um, so Game Programming Patterns by Robert Nystrom is the book that I'm currently reading. Um, and then also uh, this Design Patterns book by Head First is also pretty good. If you're, uh, into making more um they're like code structure kind of videos like how do you set up your project's code so that you can you know build upon your project it's easier you don't have a lot of headaches you don't have huge codes code like scripts with like a thousand lines in them um and it all like you know works together nicely optimization videos yes for sure have i written that down Bring down now. I know VR with Andrew did a optimization um, video. Definitely check that one out. But yeah. What's up, Russell's shorts? Are you wearing Russell's shorts? Or are you Russell? <laughs> And yeah, yeah, sure thing. I don't see what other books do I have? Clean Code is a good one. Let's see. 
two other books. I have a uh, clean code. Highly recommend. This is more of a computer science type. Um, you know how to name variables and classes and how to, um, you know, write simple classes and scripts and whatnot. And then um, if you're learning C sharp, highly recommend head first is C sharp. All of head first books are like really good. So um, this is a thick boy. <laughs> but it like the, it's actually like so these books are really cool because it's very um they're very humorous and like if you can see they have a lot of like you can write a lot of like writing inside of um you know just around and like pointers it's a very um it's not like dense like the a lot of books are like it's very fun and has some interesting um concepts and stuff in it and they, they just have like pre pre writing all in the lines and stuff um it's a very digestible it's a lot but it's very digestible um if you're learning like c sharp can i explain what a coroutine is okay sure let's do that let's make a whole new script so inside of scripts i want to make a new um coroutine jump into this what's the book called so uh, there are four books there is uh, game programming patterns game programming patterns by robert nystrom there is design patterns this is uh by head first um well it's by eric freeman and elizabeth robert and robson um, but the company that published it is head first and then there is clean code this one is by Robert C. Martin. Um, this was like, this was written quite a while ago. When was this written? 2012. Still, still applicable today. 10 years old. And then this one is a C sharp. Uh, C sharp by head first also. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's let's do a car routine. Let's talk about that really quick. So, a car routine is. Give me like twenty minutes. It's fine. <laughs> My wife wants me to. Come take the uh, dog to the dog park. Um, oh yeah, I'm not sharing my screen. Good call. Oh, haptic in VR? That's, uh, there's basically like a little motor inside of the um, controller. And so when you hover over something or something happens, um, the game can apply haptics to your controller and make it like vibrate. It's like a, you know, other con like the Xbox controller or something. So coroutine really quick, we could talk about that. So coroutine is um, basically something, um, so every frame, uh, usually when like all this stuff is happening, every frame there is a, um, you know, you can perform some script in your update method. So update, and then, so this is happening every frame. So you can do like a debug, log, um, every frame. But let's say I wanted to, you know, my enemy is, or like a character is shooting a rocket and the rocket is traveling um, and needs to like, you know, travel in some kind of spiral or um, do some other kind of thing or, you know, something that you want to kick off, but, um, you know, happen over a period of time that is not one frame. So like all of this code happens within one frame. So if you want to start something and have it like fade in or fade out or something like that, then you would do a coroutine. So coroutine is I enumerate, enumerate, enumerator, where are you? I enumerator um, a coroutine. And they always start with I enumerator. Um, and then 
So like, let's say in my start method, I wanted to kick off this coroutine. So I could say start coroutine and then a coroutine. So this is, you always have to start a coroutine with start with coroutine. It's like one of uh, Unity's like little gimmicks. Um, and then you call whatever coroutine you're doing. And then so inside of a coroutine, now we can, you know, wait for things, do something. So we could do yield, or return, yield, return, you wait for, wait for seconds. Yield, it's yield, yield return. It's doing it backwards. There we go. And then, we, So this is uh, basically how you do delays and that kind of stuff. Um, and so I would at start, I'd start this coroutine and then we would go into this coroutine and then when we hit this yield statement, yield, all yield does is basically is telling the, um, telling the Unity's processor to be like, okay, wait, go ahead and like jump out and wait until this condition is true. Um, so like check every frame if this condition is true. Um, and if it is, then we can carry on and keep doing the rest of the script. But if it's not true, then just jump back out and do the rest of the Unity processes that you're doing and then come back next frame to check. And so it's very useful for um, doing delays, doing fading stuff. Um, so in this case, we are coming into this coroutine, waiting for three seconds, and then the rest of the script will run. Um, and then I can do another other stuff like um, for um, I in really you know, do it five times. Um, and we can call the we'll do frame And then we'll do yield return null. So these are basically two different ways to use a coroutine. Is one is you can do like a yield return wait four seconds. You can wait for another coroutine to finish. You can wait for there's a lot of wait for kind of stuff. So wait. Um, you could wait until, wait while, wait for seconds, wait for the fixed update, wait for the end of frame. Um, a lot of like wait for stuff, wait for a callback. Um, or you could just yield return null and yield return null basically means come back next frame um, and then care pick up where you left off. Can you check like every 24 frames? Yeah. So I, I will actually do, um, that is another way to do stuff. So instead of checking for things in an update, you could kick off a coroutine in start and then have the coroutine check every um, every few frames. Um, usually I'll do that um, inside of the, I'll do like wait for seconds and then have a variable that we wait for um, and then wait for a half second and then check, wait for half second. Um, and then you would do that with a, um, like a while, and then put this in here. you would do and this is not there for now um so this is how i would you know kind of do what you're describing um is i would kick off the coroutine at start and then now every three seconds we're checking for we're doing something and the while statement basically just means we're doing it you know continuously forever um so wait come in wait for the seconds do stuff and then come back out wait for three seconds again do stuff and then come back out and since this is while true it's just always gonna it's gonna loop forever or you could have it loop for a certain amount of times in here and just like you know we're gonna loop five times and then we're gonna kick out and 
um, do more stuff, that kind of thing. And yeah, you can use a counter for that too if you wanted. Like if you wanted to, you know, be specific for frames, you could um, go through and have another loop in here and just basically loop through, count it 24 times, um, and then come back out to the top. But yeah, it's a, they're very nice. They're very, very useful um, tools. So like you would do like a fade, like you could do like fade stuff. So like inside of here, so instead of debug log, I could um, fade a small amount. And then it just loops through um, until basically I equals zero and you're all the way faded. And then after you're done, it like comes out. But it happens every frame, so it's not like you're, you know, fade screen just automatically all the way comes off or on. It like fades gently. And so you use coroutines for that. Yeah, highly right. There's a lot of videos on YouTube. Just search uh, how to do a Unity coroutine that go into a lot more depth. But this is like a really, um, it's like a little, a little primer on coroutines. Cool. Well, I appreciate all of you coming out and hanging out with me. Um, my wife wants me to go to the dog park now. So um, I will see you all later um next week we got a video coming out about the um how to build to your vr headset um and then the week after we're probably going to do some kind of asset review like auto hands or um, hurricane vr so oh so the uh the frequently called um this is just native in writer um so i'm using riot jetbrains writer ide um, and it lets me know okay this coroutine gets called a bunch um, I don't know why it says it gets called a bunch, but it's basically like a performance indicator. And then simple enough basically tells me like how many, um, complex operations are happening inside of this. Um, and this is an actual plugin, um, called cognitive complexity. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to dip out, but thanks all of you for hanging out and, uh, I'll see you for the video Wednesday. And then uh, probably do another live stream next Saturday. So uh, join the Discord if you're not. That's where all the info gets posted. So I will uh, see y'all later. Oh, the full grill tag. I I don't know when that one's gonna come out. In the next couple months. I'm planning on starting to do like full game builds pretty soon. But <laughs> turtle out. <laughs> all right.